Hello everyone. Welcome to the practice session. We have been practicing different steps of exercise two. In step one of exercise two, we try to see that the self and the body are two distinct realities. The self is the consciousness and the body is material. Something that we have been discussing, but we try to observe it directly. In step two, we try to see that there is exchange of information, there is transaction between the self and the body. And that is only in the form of information. There is no material exchange there. In step three, we saw that it is the self which decides to instruct the body and read the sensation from the body. The body being a physiochemical entity is only there as an instrument. It is the self which decides and the self is the seer, doer and experiencer. In step four, we saw that the sensations are taking place in the body and the self is not there as a sensation or as a part of the sensation. Rather, it is there at a distance from the sensation. In step five, we try to observe that whatever sensation the self is reading, it is associating some meaning to it. And the meaning may either be based on knowing or some assumption. And now we go further to observe it. So now we'll discuss the second part of step five. These are the seven steps that we are trying to go through. So in the previous session, we saw that there are three sources of sensation. One, the events happening within the body. Two, the situation outside, some physiochemical change outside the body, which has an effect on the body. And third, the effect of the behavior of the other person, which again has an effect on the body. And we could see that the self reads and tastes only those sensations that the self considers important. And we could see that I read and taste only those sensations that I consider important. I read and taste them only as and when required, when they, I consider them necessary. So in the previous session, we observed how the events outside, whether it is a physiochemical change or behavior of other human being, has an effect on the body, which produces sensation in the body. And then I decisively read and taste the sensation. I associate meaning to the sensation in conjunction with my sanskar, which may be either based on knowing or just assuming. And then I am either influenced or not influenced, depending on my sanskar. And then I decide my feeling, which may be right or wrong. And then I feel happy or unhappy. Based on this, I either react or respond and then I decide to express outside, I instruct the body. And then the body acts according to instruction and then there is finally expression outside. And we took some examples in the previous session to see how the events happening outside have an effect on the body and then how do I react or respond. We also took examples of events happening within the body and we try to observe the same sequence here, right? So. I react or respond to various uh, sensations which could have either of these three sources. And then I decide to express it outside and then the expression takes place outside. Now we'll observe it further. So reading or not reading a sensation is my decision. It depends upon what sensations I consider important. And that is part of my sanskar. So as we mentioned earlier that there are so many sensations happening in the body and we read the sensation decisively, considering them as important or unimportant. So let's say if it's a normal working day and the stomach is empty, you assign some importance to it and then you try to arrange for food the moment you feel hungry. But if you are on a fast, then you decide not to go for food and you keep on ignoring the sensation that you're getting in the body. So whether you read or not read the sensation is again your decision. And then again, you associate meaning to the sensation and that depends upon your sanskar. Sanskar means the accumulated acceptances, feelings, thoughts that we have. So whatever meaning we assign to the sensation is dependent on our sanskar, our preconditioning or our right understanding. And to get influenced by a sensation, deciding my feeling based on it again depends on my sanskar. So I may or may not get influenced by a sensation. That is again my decision, isn't it? So if my sanskar is based on understanding, 
I remain in a state of happiness. Rightly evaluate the input and then respond. If the sanskar is based on assumption, then I may incorrectly evaluate the input and become excited and react. Now let us take the example of somebody's behavior. So somebody is shouting at you. Now, if you assume that the other person wants to make you unhappy, you will feel irritated, angry, and you may also start shouting and you start reacting, isn't it? But if you are able to see that intention-wise, the other person is sound, the other person is not having competence enough, the other person is restless within, in anger within, somewhat perplexed or annoyed, and that's why the other person is shouting at you. Then you do not get irritated, you do not get angry. Now you'll see that in the same situation, the same person shouting at you, the same sound reaching your ears, right? You are reading the same sensation, but now you are associating a different meaning, isn't it? So if you have the right understanding, you associate one kind of meaning. If you do not have right understanding, then you associate different kind of meaning. So if the sanskar is based on assumption, you may incorrectly evaluate the input and then become excited and react. But if it is based on right understanding, you remain in a state of happiness and you are resolved all the time. And then you start looking for ways and means by which you can assure the other, specify the other, resolve the other. So you'll see that before going through this content, either in the previous course or in this course, you had one kind of reaction or response. And as you start exploring, you start transforming yourself, you start developing understanding yourself and your reaction comes down and your response goes up in your interactions with other human beings. So therefore, I need to observe my sanskar. Is it based on understanding or is it based on assumption? This is something that I need to make out. This is what we are trying to do in this step. So we are able to see that I react or respond depending on my sanskar. So I need to find out this is my need to observe my sanskar and try to trace whether it is based on understanding or some assumption. I gave an example of the feeling of trust. So if I have the understanding of intention of the other person, I respond. But if I doubt the intention of the other person, I react, isn't it? And this reaction will be inside or outside. When it is inside, I feel irritated, angry within, okay? And at times I may also start reacting to the other person. So this is very important. I need to make out whether my sanskar is based on understanding or some assumption, isn't it? So now you have an assignment here. Now for all the sources of sensation, observe that reading or not reading a sensation is my decision. So whether the sensation is something from within the body or some physiochemical event outside the body or a behavior of some other person, whether you pay attention to that is your decision. And it depends upon what sensations I consider important. That is part of my sanskar. And then you associate the meaning to the sensation. It again depends on your sanskar. And to get influenced by a sensation, deciding one's feeling based on it again depends on your sanskar. So if your sanskar is based on understanding, you remain in a state of happiness, rightly evaluate, and then respond. But if it is based on assumptions, you incorrectly evaluate and then you become excited and you start reacting. So what you can do, two things here, you can observe the various sensations in the body through all these three sources. You can also observe whether you are reacting or responding to these sensations. Okay, and that will let you know the current state of your sanskar, whether it is based on right understanding or whether it is based on some assumption. So if you are reacting to the sensation, if you are reacting to the situation, then of course the right understanding is missing. But if you are able to understand it properly and then respond, then it is based on right understanding. So try to find it out. This is something doable every moment. And I hope by virtue of this exercise, there's a lot of possibility of your uh, reaction or response getting transformed in your day-to-day -day life, in your workplace, with your peer group, with your family members, so note down your observations in a journal several times in a day and then keep them. I'll suggest that whatever you note in the journal, look back into it, try to observe how you reacted or how you responded in a given situation. Maybe at that moment you reacted, but now when you try to evaluate it, you are able to see your feeling now in a better way. 
and then you may plan to respond the next time isn't it and so we have been saying that we all are human beings and we want to live with human consciousness and living with human consciousness we do need to respond and not react if in the society people are able to observe they are feeling at this level how they react or respond to the sensations at this level then you can see that there is a lot of transformation going to take place in the society and the society is going to a much much better place to live isn't it so you have to start from yourself and try to be observant of all these that we are discussing in the session now and then we we'll see the transformation taking place in you so in today's session we discuss the second part of exercise 2 step 5 and we try to trace our sanskar whether our sanskar is based on right understanding or some assumption some preconditioning and we could make out that if my sanskar is based on right understanding i respond but if my sanskar is based on some assumption some preconditioning i react and i can of course make out my reaction or response to situations isn't it so in the previous session we had started observing the three kinds of sensations and now we are trying to study our deep rooted sanskars it will take time it does take time for each one of us to evaluate our sanskars it even takes time to be aware of our sanskars but this is worth doing and i hope you are going to take it seriously and continue with this so this was all for the session today thank you we'll discuss step 6 in the next session